Hello, Probers. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to a very special episode of But It Was Alien. I just shouted howdy, howdy so loud that the power of my voice rocked my microphone. <gasps> you can work out muscular like all you want. I've got the power of audio. <laughs> I was trying to equate that in my head to how strong it would be Sound against wave. Chuck Norris. I could take Chuck Norris with the power of my voice. (laughs) Anyway, why is today special? Well, because it's Greybeard's birthday. Gosh darn it. And as you all know, this means we take a break from the extraterrestrial and cover whatever the fuck we want. And potentially, maybe sometimes, always do shots. (laughs) <laughs> One of us, anyway. I've been kind in the past and have done shots on Greybeard's birthday, but this time, that is not happening. And it will be down to him whether he does shots or not. And he shan't! The rules are simple. You'll find those out at the end. Uh, <laughs> Touche. So, Greybeard, let's begin. Fine. Today, we are going to be looking at a box. What's in the box? And considering your current situation, I'm sure you're sick and tired of seeing boxes. Yep. But before we get to the box, we're going to be looking at spirits. Ah. There's a spirit in front of you right now. Can you just tell everyone what that is? That is a bottle of tequila. And (laughs) at some point, Greybeard... Maybe doing that bottle of tequila. I say maybe because it's all down to him. I feel very, very upset by this possibility. Firstly, because I'm not a big fan of tequila. And the only time I'll ever choose to drink it is when I'm particularly drunk. And secondly, this is the same bottle of tequila I threatened you with on your birthday episode. But you didn't hit the the criteria to do it. Now, the question is, will you hit the criteria today? To Absolutely. Do this of course I will. Swine. Ah. Uh. Well, we're looking at boxes and spirits today. Hold on. Before we go any further, I just want you to know that this very moment, I'm starting to plan your birthday episode. That's fine. Just remember that as we continue. But also remember, it's up to you how many shots you do yeah but we say that and it never really is is it i mean it is well i'm sure you are well aware of what today's case is about no actually a dibbuk ah interesting so dibbuk in jewish means to adhere to or to cling to or adhere or cling cling on a dibbuk is a spirit which is said to be the dislocated soul of someone that's dead. Dislocated? Detached from. <laughs> ah! Pop the bone out of my soul! Ah! Pop my dibbuk. It will either leave the body when it's exercised. On a treadmill? Or completed its goal. Hmm. What's interesting is I wrote this on my list of potential episodes to cover. And I haven't, obviously. <laughs> and you snuck in there first. <laughs> this was going to be like my, probably my second or third one in the future that I was going to cover. Uh, you're lucky. Or am I? You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for the or am I. <laughs> there is okay, a yep. There I've just... Of an exorcism. Ah. Uh, is that Constantine? That is, that is Constantine. That's a picture of an exorcism from Constantine, which I must say I actually quite enjoyed the film. I watched with that Reeves. about two months ago. Uh, you're a lot fresher than me. Again, I've stuck it on my Netflix awesome. list to watch shortly, actually. I think I've watched it about I was thinking, five times. I fancy watching that. After I watched, uh, what was that program that came out fairly recently at the time we were recording this uh, on Netflix? Big budget, moody bastard, demonic the Endless. Oh, Sandman? Sandman, yeah, because it had a variation of Constantine in it. That made me fancy watching Constantine. That's why I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, Manis, whose first name is Kevin. Can vouch for him. Honourable Kevin. Powerful name, that. Real strong and powerful. So, Kevin was a creative writer. Yep. And really also creative owned character. A small antiques and furniture refinishing business. Businessman. In Portland, Oregon. From time to time, if people weren't bringing items to his shop, Kevin would venture out to yard sales and the like to see what he could find. And in 2001, at an estate sale, he stumbled onto something special. Uh oh. He stumbled upon a box. Wrath in the box! I'm going to be doing that a lot today. You've put a picture in of the Mario question block. I have. Excellent. Yeah. Fine work. <clears throat> oh, there's a there's a second there is. picture you've put in the research notes here. That is of the a, box. That's the actual box. That's the box. That does look pretty antique. It's a wooden cabinet with two doors and a drawer beneath it with... I can't really make out what the metal markings are in the middle of each cupboard. Almost like the knockers on Labyrinth, but they don't look like knockers quite. And lots of scratches all over this cupboard as well. That that concerns me. Why? Looks like it's um, decorative. Like What, decorative scratches? No, the... The metal things. Metal, yeah. Yeah, I just couldn't like work arrows. out what they're supposed to be other than... They're like grapes. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a bunch of grapes. Can the box be locked? Can't see a lock on it. Interesting. I mean, that need. If you saw that at an estate sale, you'd be thinking that needs some significant upscaling. To be honest, it's not in the best condition. There's marks all over it. The drawer has got a massive gap between it and the cupboards. You can see in the middle of the cupboard doors whatever's in there isn't being kept safe. I think that's slightly pushed open. Uh, for okay. Effect. A dramatic effect. Rather than it can't be closed. Also, you got to think antiques. You don't always want to re-finish them or mm-hmm. make them like new because then they lose their antique. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Completely appreciate that. So the box originally belonged to a Polish Holocaust survivor oh, shit. by the name of Havela. Before her immigration to the US, Havela had escaped and made her way to Spain. Well, Kevin couldn't believe his luck and he bought the box. I feel like Kevin may have made a slight mistake. In fact, I'm going to go a step further than that. Kevin made a grave error. He's dug himself into a hole here. This Polish survivor has been through hell. And uh, has this survivor been cursed with something which is tied into the misery that they have likely been through? Or have they tried to take revenge on the world, therefore bringing something horrid into the world? Or is that person's own spirit going to have possessed nearby things when they have passed? Like something that they hold near and dear. Yeah. Therefore are tethered to it. Like, all the pain and horror this person's been through has manifested as their spirit when they've passed on and attached themselves to that box you've shown me. Hmm. That's a... Or... That's that's a theory. Or I could be way off. That box could predate this person by hundreds of years. When he examined the box... What in the box? The contents inside were as follows. Two 1920s pennies. Worth nothing. A lock of blonde hair bound with a cord. Was it tied around a dick? No. A lock of brown hair bound with a cord. Uh, Okay, that's starting to get creepy. A single candle holder with four octopus legs. A small statue with the word Shalom (laughs) engraved in it. And one dried rosebud and a small golden wine goblet. Hints of religion and the occult within that selection. These aren't just random items or possessions left within the box. They were placed there for a reason. These items within Jewish folklore, when brought together, exercise demons. Now, you may be wondering why they are there. Was she an exorcist or was it something else? Well, Havela and her friends had performed a seance in the past and oh. she trapped a dibbuk 
in oh. this exact box. I would also like to state, I totally forgot that we hit a point where I was to tell you how many shots you were meant to do. So I'm going to tell you how many shots you've actually got to do right now. Zero. Well done. But you, the shots are there. Yeah. You haven't got to do any. Like I told you, the amount that you have to do <laughs> is totally down to you. I feel like you're going to pull the rug from under me here. I'm pulling no rug. And you have done well. Mm. I'm glad you didn't make me do a shot for every time I say what's in the box. Cause that... that crossed my mind, <laughs> but then I thought you're going to do this far too often, so it would just be cool. Yeah. Just on the note of the case, Havela, why only one name? Are they like Prince? No idea. This is like the celebrity of the exercising world. Whilst doing the research, I couldn't find anything to give their second name. So if you've got a demon in your cupboard, you're like, oh shit, let's call Havela. Everyone knows who it is in the occult world. Mm -hmm. So Havela, I've decided, is a famous exorcist, has trapped, uh, what are they called? Dibuck? Dibuck? Dibuck. A Dibuck so ferocious that it can't be dealt with. So they've trapped it in this cupboard and put in occult items to weaken it to keep it in a state of normality rather than being able to grow and attack. Normality? As Stability. In it's at its current level and can't get any worse? It can't, yeah. So what if it's already a really well, terrifying... Well, saying they brought it down and kept it there. Oh. Uh. So perhaps not the best choice of words, but my mind was going blank. I'm it, still kind of on edge thinking that you're going to pull the rug from under me. So if it was a level three <laughs> nunchuck wielding demon. And they pulled it down to a level one. And it every time it tries to wield nunchucks, it just smacks itself like, in the face. A level one, all it can do is knock on a few doors and windows and stuff. And it can't quite hit that next level two. Mm -hmm. I'm a level two. Dibbuck! Starts making sounds. Wah, 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 wah. Wah. Well, Kevin decided that he wasn't going to sell his box. It's a man of strength. At first. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> He's a man of careful thought, in fact. So, took it home with him. And shortly after, he started to experience weird phenomena around the house and within his dreams. When other people would stay the night, they would often end up having shared dreams between them. Level three? And Kevin decided that enough was enough and he wanted rid of his box. So on his mother's birthday, he gave her the box as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Biatch! <laughs> that same day, he gave her his box... She ended up in hospital after suffering from a stroke. She left a huge inheritance behind. Kevin did some investigating and spoke to other owners of the box and found that they also suffered similar disturbances. Each one of them have said that they would smell cat piss. <laughs> <laughs> Why does a dimmick smell of cat piss? Or jasmine. And within their dreams, they would dream of an old hag. Was the old hag the dimmick or was that Haleva? Was that her name, sorry? Their name? Who knows? But I would also like to let you know that you have zero shots to do, Greybeard. I'm getting really confused. Why? Because I've got no idea what's happening with regards to these shots. Again, I've literally told you how many shots you do is totally down to you. Yeah, but what do you mean by that? Do you mean how I behave I mean, I and mean that's the rule? I mean or do you exactly mean I literally that. say, I'm going to do a shot for this one. And then because I do a shot, you make me do a shot? Well, you've just said you're going to do a shot, so uh, I think no. you should do a shot. <laughs> I, no, you said it's up to me. <laughs> and you said... That you would do a shot, so I think you should do a shot. Do I have to? 
No. Are you trying to goad <laughs> me into it? No. I'm just saying that I think you should do one. I think you should do one. No. <laughs> Ah, uh, see, I've got the case on this side of my mind. Then I've got your Jedi mind tricks on this side of my mind, <laughs> and I'm getting caught between the two and don't really know what's happening. Well, let's get back to the case. Is there anything that you want to go over before we carry on? Yeah, what are the shot right. rules? I'm not telling you, but the old hag. I don't think it is Havella. I was, think it yeah. is the Dybbuk in some form of manifestation because. If Havela has been exercising for many, many years, Havela may well look a little bit weathered, having That's lived true. a difficult and emotionally traumatic life. Havela may be appearing in dreams to try and save people, but they think that Havela is a demon when actually Havela's there to fight the demon Ooh. and they're trying to get rid of Havela. <laughs> get out of my dreams, hag! <laughs> so she's put herself in the box. To help people. That's Havela's hair in the box to fight off the demon also in the box who Havela has power over. But when the demon's manifesting, people are fighting off Havela. The demon's tricking them into thinking that <laughs> Havela is the, the demon. So it's using Jedi mind tricks, you would say? I would say. Director of the Museum of Osteopathic Medicine in Kirksville, Jason Haxton. He was keeping up with the blog posts and decided he wanted to experience this himself. So, with the box now put on eBay, he decided he would buy it. It was noted on eBay exactly what the box was, but that didn't matter. Haxton had been following the blogs. Haxton would go on to allegedly truthfully experience a myriad of odd things. He started to develop strange health problems. He would randomly cough up blood. He'd break out in hives and would also suffer head to toe in welts. He wasn't the only one in the house that would suffer. His wife would also experience bloody weeping blisters which was the cause of coming into contact with his clothing after a failed containment attempt. Light bulbs in his office would constantly blow, and he had enough of this, so decided he wouldn't keep the box at work anymore. He took it home. So, the health problems you listed, were they the strange health problems, or were there additional problems that were strange? They were the... Strange health problems. Okay. Well, putting that to one side, Jason, you would imagine, was a bit of a non-believer. This is where non-believers F up. He thinks it's a nice little bit of history, a funny item to have. Pulling a few attendees at the museum and whatnot, in a bit of tourism, bit of visitation. Jason didn't realise... The strength of this box. Mm-hmm. Jason got cocky. So, and then, hold on, one more thing. He, so he, where he had at his office, which I'm assuming is the museum as he worked at museum, mm-hmm. then he took it home. Mm-hmm. Well, that was stupid, wasn't it? <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's letting it get hold of the family, the neighbourhood. If you've got a massive problem, don't bring it home. <laughs> well, you've also got to think, Every time this box has been in someone's possession, they've taken it home. Mm -hmm. Is that through choice? Or are they being coerced? Compelled. Or compelled. The power of the buck compels you. That's a strong box. Do you reckon that the only way to protect yourself is to put your own hair in the box? Ooh. But only Havela. And someone else. And the random... Was it blonde? Of hair. It was a blonde, a and blonde dick hair, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a dick hair, but a blonde hair and a brown hair were found in the box. Okay, a, a blonde hair that was round a dick, yeah. He'd taken the box home, but left it in the back of his truck. And that night, he had nightmares. <laughs> yeah, here you, we go. <laughs> you know exactly what he had a nightmare about. The same hag-like woman. What is that? That looks weirdly familiar. 
It's the it's one of the hags from The Witcher Three. Macbeth. The Witcher. Oh, The Witcher. Sorry, I thought you said The Witch. The <laughs> Witcher's Three. <laughs> I think it's called a bog hag. <laughs> she looks absolutely grim. Has got long black hair, a really, really lengthy green tongue that also looks like she's bitten through, kind of a misshapen back, a really long boob that's from her shoulder down to her hamstring, and it looks like, oh, that's really grim, I don't want to say what that is, but a dead type of creature on her back. Pretty hag-like. Maybe this isn't Helvecca. Oh, I've pronounced her name wrong again, haven't I? Havella. Their name. Hel- Havella. Havella, sorry. I think that's just a collection of bones, like skulls, in a, like, okay. wicker basket. Either way, basket thing this hag is looking less like the exorcist and more like the exorcy <laughs> now. This, however, still wasn't enough for him to get rid of the box. Oh, dear. Maybe he enjoyed his nightly visits from the hag. Well... <laughs> But the straw... If that's the only thing that's appearing in your dreams, you know? <laughs> Jason's got needs. But the straw that broke the camel's back was not that he suffered, not that his wife suffered, but when his son noticed something. Do we know the name of the son? They were watching TV when his son noticed a black flame of mass in the room with them. Oh, dear. Haxton finally did something smart and contacted some rabbis and attempted to seal the Dybbuk back within the box. And it was successful. Do we cover how they did it? We don't. Shit. Because now I'm feeling like you might have brought these items along with you, (laughs) and you're going to leave the Dybbuk here. What? (laughs) What's this picture about? Mr. Moonwalker has dropped a picture from, I think that's South Park, isn't it? The movie. Yeah, horse fucker. When they have um, Cartman gets the implant in his hand. Success! The child doesn't want to swear! <laughs> so yeah, it was successful. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make that connection at all. And I doubt anyone who heard the explanation as to what that image was did either. Well, that just speaks volumes about how weird I am then. Yeah, because as but... soon as I heard the word success, I was like, ooh, South Park. So Jason has now learnt how to get the spirit under control, but has Jason learnt the techniques himself, or is he going to need to call in the rabbis every time? Jason took the box and has hid it in a secret location, which he will not reveal. Did he send it to his mum? Happy birthday! (laughs) But what I will reveal to you is that you still have zero shots to do. Is there a possibility that I can get through this whole episode without doing a shot? Yes. Is it a high possibility? I mean, it is now. I'm starting to feel like you're going to make me do a shot for every time I don't do a shot? No. And then at the end, you're going to be like, do ten shots. That's just mean. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) At your point. It would just come back on me tenfold. Yeah. And? But I need to give you ways to get out of doing shots. Otherwise, if I just go, oh, at the end of every sentence, you do a shot. Yeah. We've we've done that one. It's just getting you, (laughs) like, doing shots for no reason. There has to be a way for you to get out of this without doing a shot. Otherwise, what's the point? I might as well just do what I've done for the Loveland Frog, which was still funny. And just, just said, Kev, do a do shot. Shots. Yeah. But that's been tried and tested. Mm. It was a success. It was a success. But I don't want to go back to that well so quick. Again, I feel conflicted in my thoughts as to whether to focus on the rule or the case. Focus on the case? Because I, I feel like damage is coming my way. I'm on edge. <laughs> so, Haxton himself has written a book about his box and the experiences he had with it. And that is a picture of the cover of the book for you. Okay, it's a picture of the same box with 
a lady slash hag holding it. Don't know if that's a good thing. So or yeah, a bad I thing. don't know if that's meant to be um, the hag from the dreams, yeah, or if that's meant to be Havella. I at, have no idea. At first, the head kind of looks pretty normal for an older person. There's but nothing the freaking. The hands out. look weird. The hands, the fingers are overly long. Not so much that there's a definite hag-like element to them, but it's suspicious. She may just have really long, creepy hands. Or it might even be the angle, but you just don't know, and that's the thing. They haven't made it clear. In 2004, Haxton sold the rights to the book to Hollywood, and it went on to become the film The Possession. Did it? It did indeed. 2012's Possession. Mm-hmm. He then gave the box to Sack Baggins hey. from Ghost Adventures to display in his museum. So he hid it and wouldn't tell people where it was, only to give it to Zach Baggins. Only to go to that same hidden location and then give it to someone else. So there was absolutely no point in that. He was just trying to draw up publicity until he could sell it, most likely. So now this is the part of the probe where we turn to science and scepticism. Chris French, who is head of animalistic psychology research unit at Goldsmiths College, believes that the owners of the box were already primed and expecting bad things to happen. Hmm. So whenever anything bad actually happens, they could blame it on the box. And in 2021, Honourable Kevin Manis came out and told everyone that the story of the Dybbuk box was a complete work of fiction. No! And that it had done exactly what he wanted it to do, and that was for it to become an interactive horror story in real time. He also claims that over time he added bits to the story to keep it evolving. He created the eBay post and then subsequently everything after it. I think Kevin is just trying to cover for the spirit world. You also have to remember, Kevin was also a creative writer as well as a shop owner. Touché. And he's even challenged people to find anything referencing a Dybbuk box anywhere in history prior to his original eBay post and claims that he will pay them $100,000 dollars and tattoo your name on his forehead if you can gosh i want to find a reference <laughs> to them <laughs> so that kevin if i got if i did it he'd have kevin tattooed on his forehead like he couldn't remember his own name <laughs> what's your name he just point that's a lot of skepticism there that is a lot of skepticism. bloody good idea i've got to say from kevin to create that like he's created a viral story potentially, but I reckon. But someone else has made money off it. <laughs> Probably a lot of money. Well, how much money did Kevin make for selling it in the first place? I don't know. I don't know how much is... he sold his box for. <laughs> is Kevin Jason? No. Ah, uh, that would be even more creative. <laughs> the the Dimmock box itself, though, as much as they're saying it's a horror story, we've had the. Hold on. I was going to say we had the mum sadly become unwell, pass away. She didn't pass away. Well, she probably did at some point. Might still be alive. Regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kevin's mum. Jason became unwell, had strange health conditions. How do we explain those? <laughs> yes. How do we? Kevin couldn't have made those happen. So... Before we conclude and answer those questions, let's summarise. We have the story of Kevin Manis, who found the Dybbuk box at an estate sale. He started to experience thunky... Thunky? (laughs) Thunky. Thunky goings on with his box. (laughs) (laughs) My box is doing things. So decided to get rid of it so gave it to his mum for her birthday, who had a stroke that day that he gave it to her. He blogged with others and then decided to sell his box on eBay. It's actually a lie he put on eBay and then blogged, if you believe this story to be real. 
Jason Haxton, who was following the blogs, decided to buy the box and then experienced a shit ton of strange going on in his office and also at home. His health suffered, his wife's health suffered, and none of this was enough until his son witnessed a black flame of mass. He spoke to some rabbis and they got the Dibbuk sealed back in the box. He went on to write a book and sell the rights to Hollywood. And in 2021, Kevin came out and admitted he'd made the whole thing up and offered a shit ton of money to anyone that could find anything about it before his eBay post. So Greybeard, do you believe that the box is truly possessed and Jason's account is real? Or do you believe Kevin, Kevin, (laughs) and subscribed to the notion that this is completely made up? But before you answer that question, I need to let you know how many shots you need to do. And that, my friend, is one. I could not have less of a clue what I'm doing this for. Is it because I questioned the (laughs) truthfulness of the case once in querying? In fact, I went on a tangent and suggested the case was actually real because Kevin couldn't control Jason's health, so I take that back. I'm not telling you why. What I was going to say earlier before I got sidetracked in my mind was that this spirit isn't the worst we've encountered by any means, is it? It gives people funky dreams of a hag, which some people might have anyway. A little bit of illness. I say a little bit. Bit of mild. Bit of mild. Blisters and whelps. Yeah. Bit of mild blistering. Uh, Copping up blood. But it didn't go anywhere. Presuming they just stopped coughing up blood and that's not still going on today. True. Just to say, that shot really was grim. That's possibly the bottle that we used last time, which is several months ago. It's been open all that time. (laughs) It's starting to come back up on me. (laughs) Just imagine if you've got to do the tequila shot as well. I'd rather not think about such things. What? What have you stopped? I haven't. I was about to say, so this is the point, and then you just looked at me weird. So, your conclusion, Sir Greybeard... I'm not saying that it was a spirit, spookies. A Dibbuk box. I'm going to take honourable and trustworthy Kevin at Kevin's word. Okay. Fair enough. A really interesting story, though. Very creative. I also am going to take the side of Kevin. And that's simply because he put that challenge out afterwards. Mm-hmm. If he wouldn't have put that out, you could have put it down to he was just That's... jealous at the fact that this guy made so much money. He Well, we don't know how much money he made, but he put a book out and he sold the rights to Hollywood. And if you're a creative writer, just think he could have done that himself and made quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. But someone else took it. So you could think he just coming out and being salty about it. But the fact he's put that challenge out there as well. He is definitely for this. This incredibly isn't... brazen. Yeah. If you're not being truthful. Oh, one hundred percent. This guy's talking shit. Here's why. What fascinates me is that people unfamiliar with the Jewish faith are probably hearing this and thinking, "Oh, it's so legit because they're saying these things like an involving rabbis and whatnot." People and of dibbuk. that faith are probably like, "This is absolutely bullshit." Mm-hmm. So, Greybeard, before we finish up. <laughs> I need to let you know if you're doing that shot of tequila or not. Well, not the tequila. Right. And, my friend. Don't smile at me. You need to pour that shot of tequila. Why? The rules, which I'm not making up, and you will see down on page nine. Uh. Every shot for a second. (laughs) 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 Ah. So the bottle of tequila has a little sombrero on and Greybeard literally just took it off and put it on top of his head. And that actually made me laugh. Sad as that is. (laughs) I'm such a kid. (laughs) Okay, so the rules were every shot for a sexual innuendo around the word (laughs) box. (laughs) And you only made one, which is very unlike you. I was, well, for a start, I'm still on my first rum. Tequila, 
if there's less than to throw out. Can't swallow it out. Oh, uh, I'm going to have to sip at it. It won't come out properly. Oh, that's grim. It's like five shots. Oh, <laughs> this is the worst thing we've ever done. And you were also... I'm having to sip it slowly. Have you ever done tequila slowly? No. Oh, I can feel it burning all the way down. It was five shots if you figured out why you were doing shots. <laughs> but you never had to do a shot after that again. So I commend you for doing the shots. Thank you for joining us for this week's birthday oh, pro. This is the worst forfeit ever. You can find us on Facebook at But It Was Aliens. Our Facebook group is Extraterrestrial Towers. And we're on Instagram at But It Was Aliens Podcast. We are also on Twitter! Eat my ass! Oh. At But It Was Aliens. Oh. Uh, we also have another bunch of podcasts, which we like to call Side Probes, where we investigate things outside the extraterrestrial. These usually involve things like ghosts and dicks, but not ghost dicks. Kev's favourite dick, Rasputin's. And while I'm saying this, the grimmest look on Greybeard's face right now is insane. The, that... I, the stale shot was so much better than this. I am so glad I didn't have to do that. Well, I wouldn't be if I was you. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just before we finish up, out of curiosity, what are your least favourite drinks in the world? Honestly? Honestly? Bacardi. Um, that takes me back to a time at 19 that will never happen again. Um, Ray and Nephew. Mm-hmm. But I mean, these are things that uh, if you ask me to shot them, I'm saying no. They're never going down. But if it was a case of tequila, Sambuca, tequila, rosé, sours, I don't know, any of that kind of stuff, I wouldn't enjoy it, but I'd still do the shot. I mean, I'm happy to do my forfeit, but... Just Bacardi and yeah, like, Ray I don't and feel like I'm go. ever gonna make you do Ray and Nephew as a forfeit because I don't <laughs> want you to just throw up on your equipment. <laughs> That's going a little bit too far. I think Bacardi would have the same impact considering what happened when I was younger. What happened? I had my hand in a splint for a couple of months after that eventful night. I lost time. <laughs> but what happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if I had no recollection of like. I did have no recollection, but I was being told multiple stories of what happened. If I hadn't, I would have assumed I got slabbed. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the night where you had to, or you went home early? Or was that a different one? That was a different one. Uh, You're thinking of the one yeah. we walked in the club and I was there for like five minutes and then went. Yeah. Yeah. After getting turned away the first time we tried. Did we? Yeah. They said you were too drunk. And so we walked into the pub over the road from where we were, waited for the bouncers to change and walked back in. It's true. Yeah. I last. Uh, they weren't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if anything, those bouncers done their job. Once we walked in there, I think I lasted five minutes. Couldn't see my hand right in front of my face and then walked home. That was oh, one night. That was the worst forfeit we've done, truly. No exaggeration. Because the nature of that tequila bottle was that it had such a small tip that I just couldn't suck it out. It just wouldn't come. So I had to take really little mouthfuls and keep on going. Oh, my mouth was going numb. And I was getting the taste of every little inch. Well, at least we know Greybeard's oh. persistent. <laughs> As always... I have been Moonwalker, and he has been Greybeard. Happy birthday, Greybeard. No. Remember, the truth is up the box. Hash <laughs> tag. Pro 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 Pro